That board does introduce some interesting dynamics on the east side. <laughs> Not that you care, but just saying. Let's see. Promote me. Shen one and two for 15 bucks. Shenmue one and two? I mean, you could just... Yeah. You could also just emulate those things for free as well. Not that I would I could, condone piracy I could or anything. I could own but... Shenmue 1 if I wanted. I, re I still have my Dreamcast. Uh, I also have a Dreamcast. Uh, somewhere. I have all of my old consoles. I haven't gotten rid of a single console. I got rid I of... rid of one and I've regretted it ever since. Yeah, I actually got rid of my... I didn't get rid of the console. I got rid of my games for the NES because my NES um, stopped working, like, at all. But my friend still had a working one. This is, like, way back in, like, high school. And so uh, I ended up, like, I would bring my NES games to, to his house to play them. And at some point I was just like, you know what? No, I'm just going to leave these here because mine doesn't work anyway. So you can just have them. And I kind of regret that. But, you know. It happens. We'll wait for Rill to uh, to get here, and then I'll spawn the thing. God, when you move around, this, this um, the background really looks <laughs> entirely 2D. Yeah. The, uh, the Mage's Guild Library. Should use this background for the uh, for the game that we're playing. Probably not going to, though, because I don't have it available to me. I had a weird urge to play Skyrim, but the thought of having to reinstall it again <laughs> and turned me off. And do all the mods too? Are you gonna do mods? You can't play Skyrim without mods I on PC. Skyrim without mods. You can't. It's it's physically impossible. Todd didn't say no. <laughs> why would you though? Yeah, if you're on PC, uh, why would you ever play Skyrim without mods? Why would you ever play a a Bethesda game without mods? Just gonna get bigger. <laughs> the uh, my hard drive has, is precious real estate. It's free real estate. Uh, the Lafave <coughs> brothers have been playing uh, Skyrim because they, they finally finished uh, Oblivion a while ago, and so they finally started playing Skyrim. Finally finished Oblivion? Well, they've been playing it for a couple of years. I mean, that's what they were known for. They were known for those those videos where they were like mimicking the uh, the Oblivion like voices and stuff, and then, and then they actually started playing Oblivion, and they, they got known for those. But they actually finished it, like eventually, and and so now they're playing Skyrim. I think on my original run of Oblivion, I'm halfway through the entirety of the game. Like I finished the 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 vanilla main story. I finished Knights of the Nine. Um, I was working my way through Shivering Isles, but I stopped. And then I still have the, like the strongholds that I never finished building. I um sometimes I think about going back and playing Oblivion again because I only ever actually played vanilla Oblivion like way back when it came out. I never actually had any of the DLCs because I bought it and played it before the DLCs came out. Last joke, another stronghold needs your help. No. They can fight for themselves. I gave them my good guns. But not my best guns. My best guns in <clears throat> Fallout were the the ten millimeter you got from the start, but I had it so heavily modded it was really strong. And what is it? The auto rifle or whatever? The like the standard assault rifle. Speaking of mods, Kevin does this thing where he destroys a game with mods and then plays it. Lately, he's played San Andreas. 
and one mm. of the things he did was replace all the car sounds with sounds he made himself <laughs> with his voice. It's kind of funny. That reminds me of a mode you could unlock in Time Splitters 2. It was just called human gun sounds, so it replaced all of the guns with just people making bang noises. But every weapon was different, so it, it, they were I think, I think he did that too. Also, all the characters are SpongeBob characters. When is Kevin going to have me on as a guest host? I don't know, ask him. I don't even watch any of his videos. He link them and I never watch them. I'm sure you've watched at least one. I might have seen like one or two at some point. Uh, sometimes it feels like I have too many videos to watch. Like, I, like I'm like i following too many uh, YouTubers. And then there's other times like, for instance, the past week where they've all been like super busy for the past couple weeks and so there's like barely anything new on and i am like wanting for for new stuff to watch Jeez, mm. steam you look at one titty game and then suddenly you start suggesting them all the exactly the same as youtube youtube you look at one you look at one instruct like two minute instructional video about how to uh wrap a uh a water pipe with plumber's tape and now like half the videos they're recommending me are are like DIY and, and plumbing stuff and it's like I only wanted the one thing I don't need all of this stuff I'm not getting any fine, servers yeah. my hope for friend servers are you using your <laughs> uh, laptop real yep oh my god hold on Jesus you're like super loud oh there it is Oh my god, okay. I thought you were gonna hook up your microphone to your uh, laptop and use that. I did. I am you... on the microphone on the laptop. You're on the same microphone that you use on your computer? Yep. That's that's not true. You, I think you need to adjust your Discord settings to use the new microphone. Oh, well, this is... The... okay, let's see. There's no way that that's true. Because you sound exactly the same as you usually do on the laptop, and you do not sound like you do on the microphone. Yeah, it might not be picking up the mic. All right, there. Oh, that's fucking ridiculously better. Okay. Turn you back up. This is an unsettling game. Just, uh, talk. I talk a bit, real. don't like whatever this room that I'm in. Keep like ducking out. You're you're in the library of the win of the College of Winterhold. I don't like how weirdly fish-eyed it is. Well, that's because yeah, you know, the background's just, a sphere. Yeah, it's just a sphere with the texture on it. I don't like that. It would look bad. It wouldn't look so bad if we were in the center oh. of the room, not off to the side where the curves. One more. I mean, uh, yellow. One more uh, uh, adjustment, really, you might want to look at. What? In your settings and voice and video, under voice activity, it says automatically determine input sensitivity or, or not. Yeah. You might want to, like, play with that, like, maybe turn that off and move the bar up and down. Because you, sometimes you, like, uh, you're, like, ducking out, like, like, I can hear you talking, but you, but you kind of, it, like, cuts you off. Because it thinks you're not talking. So YouTube suggested a game to me called Granny. Uh-huh. It's a survival horror game, sort of. <laughs> what? You, it's you a have to escape. Yeah, I know what. You have, you have to escape is. Granny's house, and you have five days. To... It's a survival horror game. Yeah, survival you have to horror Granny. game. It's really terrible. It looks really bad, but kind of in a like a charming way because the graphics are pretty bad but it just looks the presentation from the pictures looks like it's got some sort of charm 
like yeah it, it it it's probably the best one of that type that i've seen they there are a bunch of that type of game now but it's also just really bad is that it, kind of like god's basement is that that kind of game or no it's, i, I want to uh, say just by looking at this it's kind of like clock tower oh yeah. okay because uh, Granny yeah. is like a ever-present threat that you can't ever really kill. You can only stop her for a bit. Is it inspired by that Hello Neighbor thing? Uh, Maybe. No. Mm, hard to say. Basically, uh, she knocks you out, you wake up in a room in her house, and you need to escape before she kills you. And you have five days before she kills you. Make sure and to open like the uh, traps and shit around the house. Open the the website. It asks you to open. Uh, this is honestly, it was in the newest uploaded to Tabletop Simulator. It looked kind of interesting. It reminded me a bit of the game from from Life is Strange, the dice game, except like there is a whole thing. There's like a whole adventure aspect to it. Um, and so I, I wanted to play it. Um, and that's basically what it is. It's, it's, everybody rolls dice and you have to decide where to put your dice. And it's a co-op game. It's not a competitive game. We are working together. Mm -hmm. Or am I? I uh, not on, I'm not on here anymore. You have to pick the color. Yeah. I have, uh, adjusted <laughs> the, uh, the board a little bit for, for easier playing. <clears throat> can I... I'm shocked by all these color choices. Why? I mean, I would have been yellow, but there is no yellow. And I can't be purple. These are purple. these are actually literally just the colors that the game came with. I did not adjust the colors at all. I adjusted where the uh where the player placements were because it had like all of the colors and we didn't need all of the colors. We only need four colors, so Rilla, are you saying you're yellow? Would have been yellow. You're yellow. Uh, I actually, no, I forgot to actually set this up. So let me, let me set this up a bit. Uh, I can't remember how to set up. There's like a particular way to set up the cards, kind of like, kind of like uh, the expanse. It, basically, it just makes sure that the These master of shadows English. card. Yeah, it's not. I mentioned that, uh, in in chat earlier. Set up us the bomb. It's it's not a German game, I don't think, but for some reason this is the German version of the game. There is not an American version I've of the game a lot of games on TTS. That I know are like mostly I've seen them in English, but on TTS they're they're they've been set up by people from So that just happens. Yeah. So do you have uh you have translation? Yeah, I'll, I'll, if you are patient, Rill, I will get to it. I'm literally still setting this up, so give me a few minutes. Oh. Uh, because there's, like, something in particular I need to do with the cards. Board games are kind of huge in Germany. Okay, so I shuffle this. How did you know? Base is kind of huge. And then count out True. stacks. <laughs> and then it wants me to put this card in the second stack. That's fine. Shuffle it. And then shove it in here. And then shove this in here. Okay, that's all it wants me to do. Uh, and then, because we're playing this for the first time, uh, we don't pick any of these cards. These are like the cards who we are. These basically just give you special... Didn't mean to shuffle them. Special powers. Uh, let me grab out the ones that we want to use. We want to use this one. 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 And that's it. 
Uh, so you can pick which one you want to be. Uh, basically, it's fighter. Uh, this is the fighter. Uh, this is warrior. This is adventurer. Oops. And this is healer. There's uh, the difference between fighter and warrior. So the warrior is basically just these special things, and you'll understand this once we get playing. The warrior is able to use more than one value of dice. You'll understand what that means when we start playing. The fighter can defeat an enemy with a total of four instead of six. And again, you'll understand what that means when we actually start playing. The healer can heal. Uh, there is HP in this game, so someone will want to, to heal. I'll be a heal slave. Uh, you can just keep that or keep it in your hand or something. Keep it somewhere handy. The term is heal slot. Um... Oh, I'm a heal slave. Actually, let me options, hands. Disable hiding. There we go. It doesn't matter. I if only we can heal see my dom. <clears throat> so this is not a this is not a text heavy game. Basically the only text that you have to worry about is is on these these cards. Um but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so the object of the game is to get these these power stones. We need to win because we are playing Book of Magic. Das, das Buch der Magi. Uh, we need five to win the game because this has five little little <coughs> things on it. There are other there are other like versions. Like here's one that requires. But will I be able seven, to snap my seven, fingers zero. and half the population? The crown of kings. Yeah, there's others on the on the backs too if you flip them over. But this is the one that they suggest you the do. The sword of the something. Uh this is the one they suggest to do uh if you're if you're playing for the first time. <clears throat> kind of a more simplified rule set. These selections are thematically incorrect though. Why? Merc should be Meister der Schatten. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> the way gameplay goes is uh, we decide whoever goes first, and then we just go around the table uh, from then on. So what you want to do is we'll do an example. You, you, when it's your turn, you take all of your dice, you roll them, and then you can essentially take one number and, and place it somewhere. So, um, for instance, I could take this one and put it wherever the hell I want. Uh, you know, there's obvious obvious places for this one to go. There's like like these three over here. There's this thing right here. Um, but then once I use that, I cannot use any of these other dice. I have to reroll them and then, and then basically repeat that. I don't have to use one again, but again, I have to choose only one number from these to use. Now, if you have dice, if you have like more than one of a number, like say I have here, two fours. I can use both of these fours, but they have to essentially, uh, uh, like this, this is this is all you can do. You can only use these two fours. So I could place these fours. You know, I can place a four over here. I can place a four over here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Does that make sense? And if so, if you have multiples, you can place all of them. Yes, and basically <clears throat> your turn goes until you have, uh, and then you would we would roll the rest of your dice, and then you basically do that until you have no more dice, and then like that's your turn. And because this is a cooperative game, there are things here that we would want to work together to do. Like, for instance, this blue area, you could, uh, because you can only really place one dice here. Rule well, is AFK during the rules, as usual. Uh, I can only really place one dice here, so if I wanted to place one dice here, that's like all I can do, and then I would have to roll all my other dice even if I had gotten two sixes. Uh, and so other people on their turns would also have to <clears> then <throat> fill this in uh, in order to get the effects from this board. Does that make sense? Mm hmm Okay. So at the end of everybody's turn, you draw a monster card. In this case, it is a forest monster, so it will go over here to the forest area. And this forest monster uh, will attack immediately. And what it does is uh, it will get rid of, uh, let's see, 
it's a five and a six because because in the forest to progress in the forest you have to place a five or a six sided die <clears throat> in each in each square uh when this thing attacks it will take a five sided die and a six sided die i think it could be any of the five or six sided dies like you like if you have like a bunch of die all the way up here you could take it from here or here or or wherever it doesn't matter it just needs to take those if you do not have any die here that it can take then this place takes one hp it loses a, a life and when you have all the way down in any one territory that's game over and that's where the healer comes in because the healer's special thing is it can use dice to to heal uh, to heal that if you lose a dice due to a monster you do not get the dice back the dice goes in the middle and you cannot use it until people put enough dice over here to equal at least 10 we're in this little thing right here and then when that happens then everybody gets their dice back from the middle uh, also if you finish a a what they call a task like if if we were to if we were to go ahead and 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 um fill up all of these or whatever and and take whatever whatever boon that we get we would we would all get our dice back as well uh and that's basically how to play the game and finishing a task is generally how you get a power gem for instance uh getting enough dice on this little path here up to this boundary tile gets you a power gem and then everybody gets their dice back but then this thing goes over here and now you have to do it again and get an extra dice and then you get another power gem etc 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 uh and we need to get five of those uh another way is to um you have to put four four or four twos four threes four fours over here and then this uh will get rid of the barriers and then we get a power gem etc etc but every single time someone's turn is over, there is a new monster that is drawn. You can kill the monster uh, if you put uh, at least six worth of, of dice on it. So like I could put two and then and then uh, uh, or Lost Joe can put two and then I could put four and that would be enough to to kill that monster. Is it always six? Yes, it's always six unless you're the fighter, and then it's four, because that's your special ability. I hit things. Uh, and keep in mind that monsters, I believe, um, they only attack once by themselves. However, you can see that there is a number on this monster. This number is two. This means this monster is rank two. <coughs> if someone pulls this monster, and there are, say, a bunch of rank 1 monsters still out that haven't been killed, all of those monsters also will attack. So basically, any monsters that are under the rank of the monster that is pulled will also attack on that same turn. So it's a good idea to to kind of, you know, make sure you don't let them build up. You, you kind of want to kill the monsters. Uh, The... Blue area is the only one that doesn't give power gems, but it gives buffs. And the buffs uh, are listed here. Essentially, um, if you fill this up with at least four dice, uh, then everybody who who participated in this will get an extra dice uh, from here to use. Um, I can't remember for how long. But basically, it's just that you get an extra dice. If you fill up with five before you, you know, before you spend it all, uh, you get those dice and you get to kill any one monster. And if you fill up with all six, and it doesn't have to be one, two, three, four, five, six, it can be, I mean, for, for like the, the four, fours or fives, it could be like one, two, three, five, or one, two, three, six to, to get the dice. It doesn't have to be in order. Uh, if you fill up with uh, six, you get to completely heal a, a territory and kill a monster and get the dice. Uh, and that's, I think that's, that's basically it. There's like a special monster that does special things. That's, that's the one that I had to, uh, do weird things to, to put into the, 
the deck. But that's generally it. Does this seem like an interesting game? Yeah. Simple enough. Uh, that's what this the, the special monster is where this this dike comes into play. I'll I'll explain him when we get to him. Uh, and then of course you know your your guy whoever you are has your special uh ability. If you hover your mouse over the card for a while, the English version will come up, and you can read uh what it says. So for mine, uh, warrior, I might place two or more dice with two different values on one territory. So that means I don't have to only use a six. I could also, if I wanted to, place a four on here as well in, in one turn. Um, I don't think I can do that basically at, at, at will, I think. I don't know if it's one once per turn. Well, after you've explained anything, now I'm back. I know, you keep on leaving every time I'm explaining the rules. Yeah, my dad called, and I can't. Okay. I can't tell him I'm doing stuff. 